Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. We're outside and for now, we have clear skies. It's amazing. However, we still can't go on the grass. It's a nightmare. But um, yeah, the car is out and I have just got the wheel alignment done and I've had my first drive on the BC DS coilovers. And I'll get to my impression shortly, but let's just have a quick look at how it's sitting. Now, I've actually got the car sitting a little bit higher than it was sitting on the geckos. Um, unfortunately, it's not on even ground at the moment, but I'm gonna leave it at that ride height just to give me a little bit more clearance when I was, as I wanna run bigger wheels. Um, but we have had the wheel alignment done. I know some people are gonna ask now, somebody actually asked yesterday, am I gonna go for an M3 or a 335 wheel alignment? Um, not being a die-hard BMW purist, I don't really care what the factory specs are. Uh, we've set this up and I've done it for sort of spirited street driving mainly because that's the main thing I do with this car. Yes, I will take it to the drags. Yes, I like to do my zero to hundreds, but really if I'm in this car, I'm normally driving with some enthusiasm, a little bit faster than I should be, but on all sorts of roads as well. So I don't want it to be ultra stiff. I want it to be comfortable. I do want to be able to do a long drive in it if I do happen to need to go to the Gold Coast or something. Um, so the way that we've set it up, basically it's got two degrees of, well, it's actually 1.8 degrees of negative camber all the way around. Now that is mainly just so that it looks good when it's parked and everything's straight. I've got a bit of a turn on the front at the moment. Um, I ended up at that number because that gives me a little bit more clearance in the rear arches. Again, when I've got the bigger wheels on, bigger tires and also the same with the front. Now, if you've been following along for a long time, the whole point, the whole point of going to these BC coils was to get the top hats that are adjustable. And I did mention it in yesterday's video, but unfortunately, the most amount of negative camber we can get out of these without it hitting the strut top is 1.8. Now I could grind out a little bit there and clean it all up, but I just, I don't want to drill into the strut tops just to get a little bit more camber. So yeah, basically we're at 1.8 degrees of negative camber. That's the most that you can get out of these strut tops without modifying the, the hat, whatever you want to call it inside there, which is a bit annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, so I've just matched it to the rear really. Now that's going to give it not, per, not a perfect setup in the rear for traction when we're trying to launch, because obviously we've got some negative camber, but it will help it with cornering and that sort of stuff. Um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but Brent has basically set the rear up so that as we roll on, the wheels will straighten out. Obviously we've still got lots of rubber bushes in the suspension. So as the power is transferring through the wheel, they're gonna move forwards and backwards slightly on the bushes. And he's got it so that, and it's how he sets up most of his sort of five to 600 wheel horsepower cars. He said, basically with this amount of, I can't remember if it was toe in or toe out now, but basically the wheel will straighten out as the, as the bushes all tension up under full power. Uh, front, Oh my God, this is so bad. I'm so sorry guys, I've forgotten this already. But basically the front is set up just to drive straight um, with the negative camber. I can't remember if he's got toe in or toe out, but he set it up how he sets up all of his cars. It's not a BMW standard setup. Um, I've driven on it, I think it's fine. Uh, but let's go for a drive now and I'll show you how I feel about it because the geckos, I was really happy with them. I had no issues with the geckos. I only really wanted to do the BCs, just as a bit of an experiment to see what they were like. Um, and to get that negative camber. Anyway, let's go for a spin. Turn that down a bit. Okay, so yeah, the, the whole thing in my mind with the BCs, I wanted to get some more negative camber in the front. Turns out we couldn't get as much as I was expecting. And that was to run those coil wheels. And that was because at the time I was thinking about doing track days and that sort of stuff with this car. Um, however, things have changed since I really joined the fleet and making this, I don't know, like a full on track car, it's just not that big of a deal. Um, we just don't have the money to get everything working in that way. So we're gonna stick with keeping our really for now, the main priority when it comes to being used off road. This, however, still gets driven on the street um, I've currently got about an E10 fuel mix in it, uh, and I will use it to go to the shops, that sort of stuff, or just go for a bit of a boost. The other thing with the BCs that's been playing on my mind, obviously with the Geckos, I bought them because they were the cheapest. Um, it's been the theme of this car, pretty much everything on it 
until sort of the last three or four months, everything I bought prior to that was just the cheapest available. So I got the cheapest turbos, the cheapest intercooler, everything I did was the cheapest. Um, but things are sort of changing a little bit and I think I'm gonna go single turbo on this car, hopefully in the next few months. We'll just see how it plays out. Yes, I know you guys probably aren't gonna like that that have come from all the 17Ts, but O really just sounds so good and the way that those singles make power is just, it's insane. So the budget build is sort of out of the window on this car at the moment. Um, and I thought I should really try and see if the BCs are worth it. Now, this road that we're going along right now is probably one of the worst roads around us. And yes, it's right near our house. You can probably hear the car all rattling and shaking. Um, but it is really quite a horrible surface. Declan's car, the M2, feels atrocious on this road. And these BCs are doing okay. Now on the drive to on the drive to the tire shop, I actually got a bit of footage. The car was grumbling. Well rumbling. It sounded like it had done wheel bearings. Uh, and I think it's just put it I've just put it down to the front wheels were so out of alignment with the M3 control arms that it was just chewing the tires up. Um, it was quite weird actually. It was a terrible drive. I got a bit of footage of it here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the rumbling. Um, but once we got the alignment done and drove about another kilometre, it sort of quieted it down a little bit. Hmm. I'm just sort of processing how these coilovers are handling that road. Um, I have the BCs on the drive to the wheel alignment. I had the BCs set at 15 clicks out, which is basically right in the middle of the adjustment. These BCDS do have 30 clicks of adjustment. And initially, I've got to say it was probably a little bit too stiff. It was not as nice a ride as the geckos. Um, the geckos I had set, the fronts I think were set 15 clicks out and the rears were five clicks out. And they also had 30 clicks of adjustment. But yeah, these were definitely a stiffer, notably stiffer experience. Um, but just going over that particularly rough road that we've just been over, you can probably tell now the road noise is quiet and right down, that they didn't feel, these BCDS has actually felt quite good. They didn't feel harsh. Um, I've probably done about 30 kilometers on them now, so things will be bedding in a little bit. But yeah, that was actually quite manageable, that little section. Just going through a little bit of tight and twisty stuff. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy on this test drive, uh, but it is, oh, Kookaburra, sitting on the road. Um, it is a road that we know quite well, and we've just done it a thousand times. So it's a good road to sort of test when we make changes to the way the cars handle. Uh, yeah. There's significantly less like it's, there's notably less body roll with these BCDSs versus the Geckos. Now it didn't have bad body roll before, but it does feel different. And I've got to say, I think I'm getting a lot better feel through the wheel, the steering wheel, when I can see where I'm going anyway. God, the sun right now is. Um, mind you, I don't know how much of that is gonna be because of the BCs or because of the M3 control arms. I. <laughs> If I had more time, I would have liked to have just fitted the control arms, then done the shocks. Um, but time is always of the essence. Look, initially, on this particular road, they're not too stiff. They're not too stiff. As I was saying about the clicker settings, on the way to the tire shop, I had them set at 15 clicks out. Uh, they're now currently both front and rear shocks are 20 clicks out. So we're two thirds of the way to maximum softness. God, why is there any birds on the road? Sorry guys. Yeah, 20 clicks out and I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously the softer you go, the more roll you're gonna get, the more floatiness you're gonna get. But it's always a compromise between handling and being comfortable. This feels quite good. So we'll go over into sports mode. And we'll go manual mode. We'll turn the TC off. Sort of trying to 
push it through corners. Yeah, that was weird. I was expecting that to pull a little bit, like understeer, not pull. Um, and the front end really dug in then. It's hmm. quick enough. Yeah, look. Okay, I don't know how much of this is going to be because of the suspension change and how much is because of the M3 control arms, but we're on some pretty crappy roads right now. And it feels good. Really good. All right, let me do a little bit more driving and I'll do some more thinking about this. This feels, driving these on a road that I know where this car and I know how this car is gonna handle, I'm much more impressed with the suspension than I was just driving it around town to the tire shop. Um, yeah, that feels quite good. All right, I'll speak to you guys shortly. ended up just doing another loop um, see if you can tell which part was double edited and what you've just seen but yeah basically to summarize these these coilovers about that shadow of a doubt give me a lot more feel than the geckos or is it the control arms fuck I've really cocked up here um, I feel like I can feel a lot more than what of what's going on with the car um, again I'm doing this on really shitty roads. These are not good, smooth roads. You can probably see how much the car's moving around. Um, they are slightly stiffer than what the geckos were with, the, with them set at 20 clicks out. Uh, the geckos were a smoother ride, but the compromise is definitely worth it, especially if you like spirited driving. Now I have also recently put the subframe bushing inserts in pardon me, and also the diff brace. They're two things that are gonna make the rear end of this car feel a lot tighter as well. Um, but this car, it feels a lot nicer to slide. Now the whole time I've had this car, when you slide it, it's never felt, it just didn't feel familiar. Um, where if I slide Declan's M2, it's a, it's a, it feels like sliding our E60 M5. This never felt like the E60 M5, but it's starting to today, and I can find myself feeling way more confident holding the revs right out on a slide, not needing to worry about it getting it back in so quickly. So it is giving me more confidence sliding the car. I don't know how important that is to anyone that's watching, but that is definitely something I can take away from this. Um, yeah, the car just feels good. Fuck, I wish I could see where I was going. The sun is glaring. Uh, yeah, the car just feels good. Um, not too stiff. It's stiffer than the Geckos, but I was expecting it to be stiffer. And I do want to add, I do think these Bridgestone tyres that are on the front of these 437M wheels do make quite a lot of noise. The noise that we were hearing on the way to the tyre shop this morning, or uh, this afternoon, were, I think it was compounded by the tow being completely out after fitting those control arms, but they do still make noise. Don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but yeah. Um, all right. So I'm just in a roadwork section and there's a few harsh transitions between the road surfaces. Didn't really feel it. And we've got one more bump coming up in a second. Not too bad. Yeah, look, the, the bumps definitely hit harder than they did with the geckos. The geckos numbed it down a little bit. I could go softer on the clicker settings on these. However, I don't want to rush to do that. I want to spend a week or two with them set as they are. Now, the, uh, they are quite bearable right now. Um, Got a few more. Yeah, that's not too bad. What I might do while we're in this construction zone is just see if we get axle tramp. See if you can hear the wheel spin. No axle tramp. 
axle tram. That is a really, really nice thing, and I think a lot of that is to do with the diff brace. I will do a separate video on the diff brace. Um, again, it's a mate of mine that's come up with that design. After fitting it, I feel like it's massively overkill, but it does seem to be doing its job. This car handles better. I'm ready to go and throw it into a corner. And it's still quite comfortable. When you're on a decent road, um, I don't get the tire noise from those bridge stones, and she's smooth. Pretty happy. I was spinning again there. Birds everywhere, no axle tram. Pretty damn happy with it, to be honest. All right, let's pull in. All right, so I'm back. And I guess in summary, thoughts on BC DS coilovers. Sensible thoughts as well. So the car definitely handles differently to it did with the geckos. As a street car, if you're just plodding around being a stance boy and you're not spirited driving, I think it would be hard to hard to go for the DSs. The DSs are a not necessarily a stiffer dampening setup but you definitely feel a lot more. And let's be real, if you're just daily driving a car, you don't want to feel bumps, you just want it to be on a nice smooth cloud. And that was, oh, put the name back on, that was more of the effect you get with the geckos. Um, but this car definitely gives me a lot more control. Over the slides that I've done, um, yeah, it feels more familiar to me. It feels more like the M5. Things feel tighter, the rear end is doing more it's, the whole car is behaving more like I would expect an M car to behave, where before this car with an open diff and stock suspension, it was pretty hit or miss with a slide. Like you were either going to get some decent angle or you were going to get nothing or it would light up both rears. Now it feels quite predictable. In fact, it feels a lot like Declan's M2 when you slide his M2. Everything feels nice and tight and it reacts quickly to steering input and throttle input. I quite like it. Um... Yeah, so in summary, I think if you're on a budget, go the geckos. They're fine. They're not track shocks, but they're good street shocks. They lower your car. They were a hell of a lot better than my standard suspension. Um, and like I said in yesterday's video, a lot of guys come in that car when I had the geckos, and people didn't even realize it had coilovers. They're really quite a nice feeling shock for road use. That car... On the spirited drives I did, that suspension set up the geckos, they were okay. Um, probably could have stiffened them up a little bit in hindsight, thinking back and actually comparing to how it felt now, but they were okay. I drove it on track once, uh, circuit I mean, like actually going around corners fast, and there was a heap of body roll. Pushing this car today through corners, that body roll seems a lot less. And I assume it's the way that the DS dampeners work. Something that BC do push with their dampeners, they say that the... The dampening rate is, is not as progressive as a normal shock. So slow speed hits or weight transfer, that sort of thing, it's supposed to be quite stiff. But then ha as you have a bigger hit, like if you hit a pothole or a speed bump or something, the dampening actually softens off. It doesn't ramp up like a normal one. That's why they call it digressive, I guess. Digressive valves. Um, the car as a whole now with... The rear subframe in insert, the diff brace, the M3 front control arms, and this suspension feels amazing. I wish I did this a year ago. Um, no, it's not as nice to drive on a daily basis. I am not in a cloud of comfort when I drive this car. I can feel a lot more. There's more noise through the car, but it feels a bit more like an M car, like an M car. I'm not gonna say it's as good as an M car, but it's like an M car with way too much power. Yeah, I quite like it. Looking forward to putting a few more mileage on it, a few more miles on it. I'm going to leave the clicker settings as they are for at least a week. I don't want to make a lot of changes. I've adjusted them once because it did feel too stiff leaving the tyre shop. We're on the way to the tyre shop for the alignment. But I'll leave it as they are now, and I, I reckon I'll probably end up softening them out a little bit more uh, for driving around town just to numb it down a little bit. But if I'm going to do any spirited driving, it takes seconds to wind some dampening in, so that's pretty good. Guys, pretty happy with it. It was nice to get out and drive the car. Um, when it was on the wheel aligner, I was horrified with the amount of mud that is under this car. And it's literally from driving 
30 meters on the grass. It's terrible here. So hopefully the rain will stay away for a little while and I'll get this thing cleaned up. We'll do some more drives in it. Final note, I still want to go and see if we can snap an axle with this diff brace. However, because I sold my PS4S's, I'm now on these Pirelli P0's and they do not hook up like the PS4S's do. It's just wheel spin city. I can hardly put power down now. I'm only on a 98 tune, let alone my ethanol mixes. But we'll see, we'll see. I still want to go and try and snap an axle, a stock axle before I put the M factories in. It's just nice to get out and drive the car again. Puts me in a good mood. We need to drive cars more. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Any questions about BCDS, hit us up below. Any questions about the control arms, hit us up below. Um, yeah, that's what we're here for. Thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next one. And just so that you know, we've got heaps to work on. Oh, really, that thing, the 325's back because it's misfiring. The 540 might be on the hoist tomorrow. It's all happening. We need a mechanic.